Hello everyone. Hello, I'm Sophie. I'm from Down to Earth. Um, I'm going to share my screen so you can see a little bit about us. And I'm hoping that that's working well. Um, so um, really to um, introduce Down to Earth as a, a, as a project, we are part of a slightly larger charity called Quaker Social Action, which is an anti-poverty charity based in East London. We, um, as a project, we offer practical support um, for people who are struggling with funeral costs um, and we operate across the UK. Um, so although we're based in East London, um, you can call us from Scotland or Northern Ireland um, and uh, we should be able to, to offer some assistance. We, um, we are a small team, but um, still in uh, the uh, financial year 2019 to 2020, we were able to offer support to 636 clients. And we helped people to save um, money on their funeral costs um, on average £1,604, which, um, as you can imagine, makes quite a difference to a lot of people. And um, part of our role also is helping people to raise funds towards funeral costs. And we um, supported our clients to raise uh, an average of uh, £1,319. So, again, hopefully that was quite a, quite a significant help to, uh, to our clients. As we learn things um, uh, along the way, we um, part of our part of the Quaker ethos is to um, share our learning, um, and hence uh, why uh, I'm here today, giving this presentation for you. So, um, talking about funerals, now a funeral must include um, either a burial or a cremation, um, and that really is the only essential item. So nice and straightforward, um, the, but there are lots of additional options and extras that can be added, some of which you may already know. So contrary to popular belief, you don't have to use a funeral director. You can make funeral arrangements yourselves, though the majority of people do choose to use a funeral director. A requirement um, for uh, cremation or burial is something for the deceased person to be placed in, whether that be a coffin or a shroud. Um, if a cremation, you can still have a shroud, you just need a special base, which um, a funeral director or shroud supplier would be able to advise you on. Funeral vehicles, um, you have your traditional hearse, which can come in all different makes, models and colours and various other options such as motorcycles, um, Land Rovers, uh, Volkswagen campers, uh, lorries, um, gun carriages, you name it, there's probably someone who's made a hearse from it. Many people like to take a specific route, either from home or from a, a, a place of significance, to the location of the funeral, or may wish to go a particular route via a favourite place. Um, for example, a football club that was supported, um, a pub that uh, was frequented, or just a, a route that they regularly drove uh, for pleasure. A funeral service, an actual ceremony, again, isn't essential. Many people look at a direct cremation with no service and no attendance, though many people do opt to have um, a, a ceremony um, at a uh, place of worship, um, a village hall, um, at home, or in the crematorium or cemetery chapels. And someone to lead the service, again, is optional. You can have a minister of religion or a celebrant who may be um, a completely non-religious celebrant or um, is able to incorporate elements of, of other religions into the ceremony as wished. Some families do opt to lead the ceremony themselves, um, which obviously makes things very personal. Um, although uh, funeral directors will often tell you it's important to bear in mind that it's an, an emotional occasion, just to take that into account. And of course, a lot more optional extras, for example, flowers, orders of service, um, doves, um, horses, you name it, you can, you can have it at a funeral. Um, my background is as a funeral director and generally if it's legal and physically possible then the answer is yes. 
However, all these things do come at a cost and uh, you may be aware that there are more than one funeral directors um, and their prices do vary significantly. So we've compiled um, a list of uh, local funeral directors fees to you um, and so that you can see how much they differ for the same service. Now we've worked on the uh, simple funeral service, which would be just a very simple um, arrangement meeting at the, crem at the crematorium or cemetery um, for ceremony um, with no additional vehicles or cortege. And those prices vary as you can see from uh, 1,895 with um, co-op funeral care up to 2,140 with compassionate funerals in your area. It is important when you're making inquiries with the funeral directors to make sure um, that you're comparing what you want for the funeral arrangements, because with packages, different funeral directors include different things with their packages. There are often uh, ways to make the uh, funeral arrangements marginally lower cost. Um, for example, compassionate funerals have uh, an offer, that, uh, an offer of a package that they can have a service in their chapel of rest for a small number of mourners and then have a direct cremation the following day with no attendance. And as you can see, that comes um, quite, quite a lot cheaper at £1,299. On top of the funeral director's fees, you'll, you will encounter things that are called disbursements and they are third party fees. And their costs that the funeral director pays to other organisations, for example, the crematorium. Um, and we've listed some of the, the local crematorium fees there. If, there's a, if the funeral is to be a cremation and the coroner is not carrying out a post-mortem, then there are doctor's fees for completion of cremation certificates. And at the moment, they are £82. Normally, outside of COVID times, there are two doctor's signatures required and that's £82 per doctor, so normally £164. And for a burial, uh, which is often more expensive, um, the cemetery fees vary significantly as well. So with stating your funeral wishes, it's important to let your family know or the people who are making your funeral arrangements know what arrangements it is that you, you would like. Um, even if you just let them know whether you want a burial or cremation, that is um, obviously very helpful to people. And I do apologize. I think my screen has just gone completely white and linked to the Dying Matters website, my apologies. If you feel like you have a conversation with your family, it's good to write down your wishes. My parents, despite my funeral background, don't like to discuss their funeral wishes. So they've written them down and put them in a safe place that I know where it is when that time comes. We do have a, um, a funeral wishes form on our website there if you wanted to have a look at that just to give you some prompts of things to things to decide things to think about and dying matters also have some useful resources on their website it's important to consider that if your family don't have uh, sufficient funds um, or are not willing to make funeral arrangements or if you don't have any family or friends willing to make funeral arrangements then you may wish to consider public health funeral. It's good to look at these in advance, especially if you're looking at having a burial. Different local authorities differ in their provisions for funeral arrangements and many default to cremation unless there are specific written wishes for a burial. So with planning ahead, making your funeral wishes and making them known to your family, obviously very important. Many people do look at funeral plans and uh, funeral or life insurance. 
um, in order to put funds aside for their own funeral arrangements. It's important with these plans to check the total cost of the plan and check the terms and conditions um, to see what uh, the, the sort of final uh, arrangements for um, payouts would be. With funeral plans, they do vary. Some will fully cover the funeral arrangements requested at the time of need. Others will um, guarantee certain elements of the plan and have other elements, for example, the third party fees that are guaranteed, for example, only in line with the retail price index, which may mean there's a, a, an amount to pay for your um, loved ones left behind um, at the time of need. The Money Advice Service has a really helpful uh, page on funeral plans, questions to ask and things to look at. Um, it is worth looking at different plans that are on offer to see which one suits your circumstances best. When putting aside money for your funeral and uh, creating savings, it's important to consider the impact not only on your benefits, um, if you're receiving benefits, but also on uh, the ability for your loved ones, if they are in receipt of benefits, to make applications for uh, statutory funds or government funds. I will give you more detail on that on the next slide. If you have paperwork in relation to your funeral arrangements, um, in relation to um, previous employment or anything else that may be helpful with regard to your finances, tell your family and friends where it is, where, you can, where they can find it for when the time comes to make it as straightforward and easy as possible. So part of our role here at Down to Earth, we look at alternative sources of funding for uh, people who are struggling with funeral costs. The primary um, area that uh, is looked at by the government and initially us is money that's in the deceased estate. So the first pull on a, on a person's estate once they've died is for funeral costs. I mentioned in the previous slide about um, government funds and how having savings may impact those. There is a fund called the uh, Social Fund Funeral Expenses Payment, which is administered by the Department for Work and Pensions. And this fund's calculations can be a little bit complex, but ultimately any payment made by that funeral expenses payment is reduced pound for pound by the amount of money that the deceased has left in their bank accounts, cash or other accessible funding. The bereavement support payment is a payment that is available, it's previously known as widow's benefit, and it's available to people who have lost their spouse um, and, and they themselves are below retirement age. We also look at charitable grants. Many of the charities we look at are occupational charities, so related to work and work history. That's another lot of paperwork that's really helpful to, uh, to keep together. Um, so it makes it easy for family and friends who are trying to raise money towards funeral costs um, when the time comes. And probably more recently, we look a lot at crowdfunding. Um, many people turn to online, online crowdfunding pages or church collections um, to raise money towards funeral costs. And this can be a really successful way of enabling more distant family and friends um, to, to contribute towards those funeral costs. So that's the end of the presentation today. I hope that you found that a little bit helpful. Um, and uh, thank you for your time. Do take care.